for the the uh, service of the word on this 21st Sunday after Pentecost at St. Paul Lutheran Church, East Lansing, Michigan. Glad you could join us. The rich man who comes to ask Jesus what he do to inherit eternal life is a good man, sincere in his asking. Mark's gospel is alone in saying that Jesus looked on him and loved him. Out of love, not as judgment. Jesus offers him an open door to life. Sell all your own and give to the poor. Our culture bombards with the message that we find life by consuming. Our assemblies counter this message with the invitation to find life by devising the mistake of the other. Now the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. Here are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. All just a new to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion eyes that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this space the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all oh peoples together, layer of love in our flesh and our bones. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. response to the hungry and the poor 
that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord, Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way, Kyrie for your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord Kyrie eleison on our world and on our Every day. Let us pray. Almighty live, ever living God, increase in us your gift of faith that forsaking what lies behind, reach out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, when we listen as God speaks to us in Scripture, preaching and song. Our first reading is from the book of Amos, verses from chapter 5. Amos was a herdsman by profession and a prophet of God's call. During a time of great prosperity in the northern kingdom of Israel, the prophet speaks to the wealthy upper class. He warns his listeners that fulfilling God's command for justice brings blessing while corruption and oppression, oppression bring fear of God's wrath. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel, and no one, with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves the gate and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous and take bribes, push aside the needy at the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silence in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's share Psalm 90 today. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, Return O Lord, Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious, gracious to your servants. servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make, Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us, and as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your work and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 4. 
Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no one, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who, in every respect, has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This whole gospel is the book of St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus has been teaching the disciples about what is most valued in God's eyes. Now a conversation with a rich man brings this message home to the disciples in a way that is surprising but unforgettable. As Jesus was sitting on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to them, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, Look how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich and enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. They're going to say to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. He said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The grace and peace of God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today is Tip Commitment Sunday, and where folks offer their financial commitment for the year 2025 for St. Paul Lutheran Church. And this isn't just for St. Paul Lutheran Church, because we send benevolence to the Synod, who half of what they receive goes on to the National Church, and they distribute to the seminaries, they distribute to, uh, they will distribute to Lutheran World Relief, and world hunger and those causes. So this money goes many, many different places, some of which we don't see or know. But we know it, it goes to help those who are most needy. Really what we give is only a portion, the financial part, only a portion of what we contribute. We also contribute our time and our talents and St. Paul, a lot of, we have a lot of people, a cadre of dedicated people that will devote all of those things. As you know, we've had active volunteers who offer many hours using their time and talents so it can function to worship, do Bible study, 
to grow in the Word. Sunday school to help young people and adults to learn the Word. Confirmation and weddings and funerals. We have concerts. We supply quilts. We've been able to supply helpful homeless kids, kits, and a Red Cross blood drive center, and also serve as a polling place for elections and a gathering place for White Hill Elementary. And of course, feeding the hungry. There's a lot of things we do, a lot of things people don't see, a lot of people that work behind the scenes to make those things happen. Not for their glory, but the glory of the kingdom. We're able to carry out our mission by being frugal and maintaining two buildings and a minimal staff. It's necessary to plan, plan the budget for the following year so the stewardship net, uh, committee needs to know what ple folks pledge so they can plan accordingly. I never preach on money. Bishop Sadly reinforced this remind us Jesus preaches on money more than anything else. Why? Because money becomes an idol. First commandment, we have a jealous God. We have a God who wants no one else before him not even the almighty dollar. God wants to be first in our lives. So money can get in the way of our relationship with God. And we're not supposed to worship money. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, the love of money is the root of all evil. So if we find ourselves loving money over many important things that we need to reorient ourselves and our lives. And that's kind of what repentance does. It's kind of the same thing. It's a repentance. I'm going to reorient my life to what's really important. And of course, as Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve masters, two masters, for slave will either hate the one and love another or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Truer words were never spoken. So instead of talking about money, what I will talk about is carrying out God's mission in the world for the glory of God. Money itself does become important when it's used to purchase food for the hungry, supplies for the homeless, offering a safe, inviting, inclusive place for all people to gather, people that are, need to be loved. When we come together, we could invite, be hospitable, and love one another, and that is used for that. But my stewardship message is simple. We give to God after we prayerfully determine what blessings we have in life. That's what we give. What blessings do I have in life? And we give accordingly. We then return to God a portion of what is God's, what God has given us. And of course, the giving of proportion is based on what we have. God does not need our money, but wants us rather to remove any barriers to following his word. I, for a long time, carried in my keychain and take this said, 10, 1080, which represents 10% for the church, 10% for the person to use, however they see fit, and the 80% to be used for living expenses. When I say 10% going to ourselves, when I'm talking about a savings in today's world, we need to save for our future. The good news is we don't have to sell all our possessions and follow Christ. With this model, we can take care of ourselves and follow Christ as we care for others. I belong to church in uh, Saginaw. I said it's in Propio School. And with that, they say, well, we want you to tithe a certain amount of your income. And we disclose that when we tithe a certain amount. But I found myself in a financial bind because my wife at the time, she had uh, severe medical problems and we had severe medical expenses. We had a very, very good policy, but except for those things that weren't covered, like durable medical equipment we had to pay, they would pay maybe 20%, we had to pay the 80% at that time. And even though it wasn't as much of this to now, it was, it was a lot of money, and I found it where I was having a hard time figuring out how I could pay my bills and medical bills and take care of my tithe, what I promised, what I committed to. I took it very seriously. So I met with Pastor Smith, this Missouri Synod pastor, and I 
I, I spilled all that I was going through and how I spent it virtually impossible to keep my commitment. So what was Pastor Smith's response? Well, he told me he had a troubled adolescence and he did a really bad things when he was young, got in trouble, and people helped him get through this tough patch in his life. That's not what I was expecting to hear. What I was hoping to hear, things were not pursued, and you've been absolved from meeting your commitment, you know, give what you can. Instead, which I become and get priestly to understand, he was talking about the grace of God. This was between God and I, and I believe that when we make this commitment, it's between God and I. Or God and you, that this, this commitment is between God, this is right. And of course, when we face difficulties, we found God is there for us to offer loving grace. Today's story speaks to this. This rich man comes up to Jesus, wants to know, what can I do to inherit eternal life? They said, the introduction said he was a good man. He wanted to inherit good life, and he told him to keep the commandments, and he told him, Jesus, he kept the good commandments, which for that time, he, he knew what they were. He tried to keep them. Of course, as we know, it's impossible to keep all the commandments. But instead of correcting him and lecturing him or giving a sermon, he looked at him lovingly and told him to sell what he had and give to the poor and then follow him, follow Jesus. He was telling this rich man that the love of money was getting in the way of his relationship with God. The most chilling depiction of the disfiguring power of wealth comes in the movie All the Money in the World, where Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg's character asks J. Paul Getty, a wealthy person played by Christopher Plummer, no one has ever been richer than you at this moment. What will it take for you to feel secure? Getty simply replied, simply replied more. See, there is never a of course, Professor Brad Benow at Trinity Center liked to call this whole thing with the Oedipus Complex. Wanted to have the biggest and the best. But even then, we have more. I remember years ago I read where Kenny Rogers, the famous singer, he said to his wife, go pick out a house, go pick out a house, uh, and you, you could spend a million dollars. And she was disheartened. He says, you really just can't find a house $3 million dollars anymore. I love to tell that story about people that just wanted the next level house. Boy, I, I have this house, I like this house, but if only, and that's what we're like, the Oedipus Complex, if only. God loves us as we are called to leave behind the things that give us a false sense of security. That doesn't mean we can't have IRAs and savings and, and those type of things, or we worked in a job where we have medical insurance, and retirement, or 401ks, but our real sense of security comes by our faith in God and in Christ. Yes, it seems impossible, the same way it is for camels to pass through the eye of the needle. In ancient times, the eye of the needle was a real narrow gate, and you'd have these camels with these big packs on them, and you'd have to pass through that. And you can just imagine what that would be like. Ironically, to have any chance at all, they would have to shed those packs. And, the, and if they were wearing something, the saddle or wearing it, they needed to shed all that to get to the eye of the needle. Even then, you look at the size of a camel, then you realize this was no easy task. We may grieve what's impossible for us Yet, it's more than possible for God, as we reminded everything, it's possible for God, even past his son through the heavens. This is a free gift from God that only God gives. It's a gift where Jesus claims our life and reshapes our stewardship, the gifts that God has given us. We are called to follow the Christ who also loves each one of us. Whoever we are, my friends, is good enough in God's eyes. As we enter through the eye of the needle, we leave behind that we leave behind cannot fit through with us. I really like the story of a rich person who simply had to bring a chest of gold with them 
to heaven. He talked to God and says, okay, I relent. You can bring a gift. You can bring that with you. At the pearly gate, St. Peter said, sorry, no possessions allowed. See the sign up here? No possessions allowed. The rich person said, but I cleared it with God. Well, St. Peter got on the horn, called, and we realized the clearances were confirmed. Overjoyed, the rich person entered heaven. Peter said, I'm curious, though, to see what is so precious to you. The rich person opened up the box to reveal dozens of gold bars. Peter's demused explained, pavement? All this fuss about pavement? It's all a question of perspective. So that we have paved with gold, heaven speaks paved with gold. As followers of Christ, we have all we need as we share with others that have needs. We give up the things that keep us from having a close relationship with God. And I know I'm doing a lot of stories today, but I read a story of a businessman who was on vacation in an exotic place with palm trees, warm weather. Everything was just perfect. If you, if you watch the movie and you see this, you say, wow, this is, this is paradise. This is a place to be. There's beautiful flora and fauna. And he took a turbo. And he loved this tour. And he's, he's looked at this and he says to the captain, he said, you know what, captain? You really have something here. This has just really struck me. I've been many places over the world, but this has struck me. You know, you can generate enough for this. You can buy a boat and another boat and a brother boat, and you buy a whole bunch of boats, and you can make a whole bunch of money, and you can work hard, and then finally you can retire and enjoy all this. Captain Lookham says, but I have that now. We do have it now. We need to realize what we do have. The desire to help ourselves outweighs wanting a close relationship with God, who ironically is the one who can save us. So with that, I'd like to make the point that we do not choose Christ. Christ chooses us. Jesus told the man because he is rich, he was shocked and went away grieving. And we never, need, never heard from him again, but are sad because we have a sense things did not go well. Someone turn to say, if you don't know the answer, don't ask the question. Well, he asked the question, and he got the answer, not the answer he wanted, but he got the correct answer, what he could do to have eternal life and be close to God. And it disheartened him. And my friends, that is sad. Amen. God of grace and God of glory, on your people for your power, crown your ancient church's story, bring its buds to glorious flower, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Of evil around us, scorn the Christ, assail his ways. From the fears that long have bound us, free our hearts to faith and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. For the living of these days, cure your children's warring bend our pride to your control shame our want and selfish gladness rich in things and poor in soul grant us wisdom grant us courage lest we miss your kingdom's goal lest we miss your kingdom's goal save us from weak resignation to the we deplore let the gift of your salvation be our glory evermore grant us wisdom grant us courage serving you whom we adore serving you
Now, my friends, let us share our faith in the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living of the dead. I've been the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we listen as we join in the prayers of the church. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Compassionate God, embolden the church to seek all who are lost. Clothe those who are naked and mend what is broken. May we be generous bearers of your eternal love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, as we approach harvest time, we pray for farmers, field workers, and those who pass us crops. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing food that feeds the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, inspire world leaders to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable disease. Direct us to seek justice and equity as all may live in peace. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, grieving, oppressed, and lonely. Deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Generous God, we give thanks for the First Nations and tribes who inhabited this land. We lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to deeper appreciation and care for the languages, rituals, and history of all indigenous people. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Protecting God, we pray for all those who serve in our armed forces. Provide for them your care and compassion. We especially ask that you watch over Beth and Ryan, Jonathan, Jacob, Noah, and Irene, and Alex. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for those who are bowed down with illness or sorrow, those who are undergoing transition in relationship, occupation, living situation, or health condition. Especially Aaron, Marilyn, Craig and family, Dan, David, Doretta, Jim and Sherry, John, 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 Jordan, Kay, Lawton, Liren family, Liam, Linda, Lizzie, Marge, Mary, Pastor Sarah, Randy, Rick and Kathy, Sherry, Sherry and Wanda, and all that we name now, allow them in our hearts. Karen, Emily's mom. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Guiding God, we pray for our church's leaders, presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our Synod Bishop Craig, and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with the respected staff as they live out their calling to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, be with the leaders of the Congregation of Grace Lutheran Church and Pastor in all the churches in our community. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Ever living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life, made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living. God of grace. Hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
Lord, remember to the kingdom we used to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. With your blessing, fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us see your love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adore. of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound ever faithful ever faithful to your truth may we be found Savior when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way let no fear of death upon us, let your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless day. Thanks be to God.